Hey, how's it going guys? So it's been a while since I've done a Cypress video. So I decided to do a video which is on how to upload files with Cypress. So usually this is the common question that gets asked with Cypress because there's not an easy way to upload files using Cypress. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm over here on Practice Automation Bro website. And if you go to the cart page, which is click on over here to go to cart page, you're going to see this upload file option. Here it's pretty simple. You select a file. Once you select it, you can just decide whichever file you want to upload. Let's say over here. And then you click on upload file. This will begin uploading your file right over here. And once this is uploaded, it will give you this message that the file has been uploaded successfully. So a really simple scenario, which we're going to go over here and try to take a look at how we can upload using Cypress. So at the moment, Cypress does not have a native support to upload files with Cypress. So for that, we're going to use a separate library, which is called the Cypress file upload. Now, this is a really simple library, which basically allows you to upload file by creating a custom command. So here, what we're going to do is create a custom command in Cypress, and then we can upload a file by doing dot attach file and then adding our file name. So don't worry about what it says over here in terms of fixture and optional process config. Basically, what we will do is something like this. We're going to do dot attach file and then here we're going to add our file name. In this case, they're uploading a JSON file. In our case, we will be uploading a PNG file. So they also give you other options such as drag and drop component. If you want to upload a file using drag and drop or if you want to attach multiple files as well. So it's a really neat solution which you can use that allows you to upload file in Cypress. All right. So the very first thing we need to do is install this package. So I'm going to copy this thing. I'm going to head over to VS Code and here I've already created a simple file called upload.spec.js and I've created a basic id block which is upload the file and assert the file name. Then over there I've said that I'm going to visit this page and this is the entire URL of my website. Now from here we're going to go ahead and start writing our test. But before that we need to install our package. So to install the package I'm going to paste it over here which is npm install save dev to Cypress file upload. All right, this has successfully added our package. And if I go to my package.json, you can see that I have Cypress file upload right here. Awesome. Now, if I head over to the documentation, there's another thing we need to do. So in order to use this custom command, which is the dot attach file, this thing, in order for us to use this, we're going to have to do import Cypress file upload. Basically say that we're going to be using the Cypress file upload library, and we have to add that in our custom command file, which is Cypress support command.js. So let's do that. I'm going to open up VS Code. And over here, we have the support folder. And from there, I'm going to go to commands.js. And at the very top or at the very bottom, wherever you want, simply go ahead and add that custom command. So let me just copy that once again. We'll copy this whole thing. And I'm going to paste it right here. Perfect. Now, another thing they said is make sure this commands file, the support commands file is part of your index.js. In my case, this is already added by default. So make sure you check it as well. That index file should have import commands, which is this file right here. Now, this is all we need in order to take advantage of this dot attach file custom command. So now we're going to go ahead and start writing our test. So I'm going to close this. So this is where we're going to go ahead and start writing our test. So what do we need to do the very first thing? So anytime you're dealing with upload files, you have to find a tag which allows you to upload that file. That means find the input tag that has the type equals file. So I'm going to pull that up over here and I've explained this in one of my previous videos and I'm going to attach the link for that in the description below. If you want to go check out and understand how exactly that input type file works, that video is created in WebDriver IO. But at the end of the day, the concepts are same, which is focusing on how to upload files in browser and how to work with the input type files. Okay, so what I'm going to do is right click on this and do inspect. And if you notice, this is input type equals text. This is not what we need. What we do need is input type equals file. So I'm going to search for that. 
So maybe I can just choose, let's say type equals file. All right, the moment I do that, I can see this I have right here, input type equals file. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna head back to VS Code. And then here I'm gonna get that element. So I'm gonna do sci.get and I'm gonna paste this. So I can do type equals file or I can also add an input type equals file. Either way it works. So once I get this element on this element is where I'm going to be attaching my file. So in my case, I've already added the file in my fixtures folder. So make sure you add your file in your fixtures folder because that is where it goes ahead and takes a look at your file. So if you add that in your fixtures folder and this is my file logo title dash BG. And here I'm going to go in and do dot attach file. Then simply add in my file name. So if you can notice, it's going to the fixture data and that's the fixture folder. So I'm going to say logo title dash bg dot png. Or to make it easy, simply copy this and just paste it here. All right. Now this thing right here should go ahead and upload the file for me. So I'm going to do this upload file to the input field. Once I do that, I need to click on the upload button to process my upload. So I'll do click on the upload button. So for that, let's take a look at that right here. So this is in upload file button. I'm going to select that. And this one is the ID is upload underscore one or the value is upload file. So let's go with value because it's easily readable. I'm going to open up VS code and I'm going to do side dot get and then add that over here. Well, let's add this in the brackets and paste it right here. I'm going to change this to single quote. Perfect. And just for my sake, I'm going to add input here just to make it really clear that this is an input field, which has a value of upload file. Then what do we need to do here? I need to click on this. I'm going to do dot click. Now, after I have done this, this is going to process my upload. Once it's going to upload something here, I need to assert that the file has been uploaded successfully. So for that, I need to assert this particular thing right here. So I'm going to hover over to this. Now this is a label which has an ID of this particular thing. And this is unique as well. So I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to head over to VS code. I'm going to say assert the file name, right? Now I'll do side.get here. We'll paste that. And then I'm going to do dot should. And here, what should I say? I'm going to say that it should contain. And it should contain what I want is upload successfully. Upload it successfully. So this is our overall test case. First, I'm going to my website. From there, I'm uploading the file to the input field. So what you need to do is find an input type equals file. If you are working with a file input, or basically if you're uploading some particular file, the easiest thing you need to do is find for this particular selector, which is input type equals file. Once you do that, just add in dot attach file, which is going to include your file name. That file should exist under the fixtures folder. Then from there, this is going to be based on your own particular website. You might want to click on upload button. You probably have some other kind of scenarios, maybe click enter or click some other submit button, but essentially whatever action you need to take to actually upload that. And then you will go ahead and assert your particular file name or whatever you want to make sure that the file has been uploaded successfully. So these things are based on your own website, but pretty much this is going to be same for your website. All right, so let's try to run this and see whether this works for us. So I'm going to do npm test. What this will do is basically run the npx cypress open command for me. And I'm going to hit enter. There you go. It's running npx cypress open. And it's spinning it up over here. Then I need to run upload.spec.js. There you go. My test is running right here. It's going to that website. Okay, now it's trying to upload a file as you can see right here uploading. 
and you can see it says uploaded successfully which is good because it did went ahead and uploaded the file however i got an error right here saying that it timed out after four seconds and the reason for that is when i upload a file here in my website it takes more than four seconds to upload a particular file now by default cypress assertions wait for 4000 millisecond now obviously if my file takes more than four seconds to upload then this is gonna fail right and this is what we are seeing over here so to fix that I'm going to simply add in my timeout wait right here when I'm doing a get on that particular element. So I'm just going to say here the timeout should be let's say 10,000 milliseconds. Just to be on a safe side, I'm going to say okay, it should be maximum wait for 10,000 milliseconds. So now I'm going ahead and uploading again. And this time it's going to wait for 10,000 milliseconds. And as you can see, our file successfully got uploaded and my test got passed as well. Just to make sure this works again, let's try to rerun this. I'm going to save the changes, which is going to rerun my test. This is just to make sure that our assertion, whatever we have added, is successfully working. So there you go. It's taking longer times. It's waiting for entire 10 seconds to actually upload. And there you go. This particular thing went ahead and successfully uploaded our file. But instead, let's say if I change the timeout to maybe 2000 millisecond, and this time I try to upload, it's gonna fail because most likely my test, my file upload is gonna take more than two seconds. There you go. Look at how quickly it went. And my test failed. Then uploading, you can see, is still going on right here. And now it says uploaded successfully. So that's why make sure to increase your timeout based on your own particular scenario. In my case, 2000 wasn't enough. So that's why I need to change it to 10,000 millisecond. All right, so there you go guys. We went ahead and successfully uploaded our file and also asserted our file name using the help of Cypress. Now I can go ahead and end the video here, but just as a bonus for you guys, I wanna show you one more thing. So in many of the websites, when you're gonna go, you will notice that this input file, if I search for this again over here, type equals file, this will be a hidden class. That means you won't even have access to upload something there. So if you notice right now, this is also hidden. If I go here and basically I have this class thing input hidden added. In this, the only thing they have done is change the position to absolute, but it's not set to let's say display none. That means you cannot even interact with that element. In my case, I can still go ahead and upload this. But in some of you guys scenario, you might have this something like this display, which is set to none. What will happen with this is, or maybe some other way where you're not able to interact with that particular element. If that happens, let's say if I get rid of this class, I'm gonna do edit as HTML, and I'm simply gonna get rid of this class here. Okay, so I got rid of the class, but still I'm not able to see that input file or that particular input being showed up. But if I uncheck this, you can see that input type is now showing up over here, input type file. But what will happen is maybe the way your website is implemented, you probably have display equals none instead of let's say position absolute, which I had in my case. And if this is your case where display is equal to none, what then you have to do is make sure you get rid of that. That means if there's a class that is added in my case, if I let's say refresh. So this particular thing file input hidden. If this class was let's say added for you and your display was none or maybe some kind of other implementation you had where you have to first make sure you get rid of this class in order for your two input file to actually show up on the screen. So just the way I did that over here, just simply removing this, you're going to have to do the same thing with your Cypress code. And only after you do that, you will be able to do dot attach file. Otherwise it might throw you an error saying that the input type file doesn't even exist. So let's see how we can actually do that. So if I just do control Z again over here, I have this file input hidden. So I want to make sure I get rid of this class using Cypress. Right now I'm doing it manually. Let's take a look at how we can do it using the help of Cypress. So I'm gonna go to VS code. And right when I'm doing a get on this, right? When I'm trying to get this particular thing and before doing an attach file, here I'm gonna do dot and have a function called invoke with Cypress. What this will do is it will invoke a particular function that you want to execute on your previous yielded selector. In my case, this is the selector that I have. So here, what do I want to invoke? Here, I want to remove the class. 
So I can use jQuery remove class function. So I'm going to do remove class. Then I will do my class name, which is what I copied there, file underscore input underscore hidden. So now what this will do is it will go ahead, get this element, then it will remove the class. This way my attach file will know where to go ahead and add this particular file to that input field. Because now I'm making that input field visible on the screen. I'm making it interactable for my attach file to actually work. Otherwise, how is it going to attach file if it, the element is not even interactable? So I'm going to save this and I'm going to head over to Chrome to see how this will work this time. So just notice here, we can see the choose file button right over here. That's the input type file. And if I go to, let's say, input here at this moment, you can see I do not see that particular choose file button showing up. But the moment I go to invoke function, I can see the choose file is now showing up right here. And this is what we are doing. We are removing that class. Once I remove this, I'm able to run the file command to actually go ahead and upload my particular file. And then after that, pretty much all the steps are same, which we just did before we were testing out our upload scenario. So these are some of the scenarios, guys, you will run into when you will be uploading a file on your particular website. So ideally try to do it directly with attach file without having to do any invoke. But let's say if that doesn't work, then you will have to see how your website is implemented. If you have a particular class that is actually blocking you, then you have to do invoke remove class. If you have some other scenario that's happening that you might want to invoke that function to get rid of that particular scenario, which is actually blocking the upload functionality. And this depends on website to website, but ideally what you will have is some kind of CSS that is added on top which is blocking that element to become interactable. So either work with your dev team or try to figure it out on your own and try to get rid of that particular class or whatever CSS that's been added on top of it. And after that, you will have no issues trying to upload your test for your particular website. So I hope this video was clear to you guys. To quickly wrap up, the very first thing we did is we installed a package, which is our Cypress file upload. We added that in our commands.js file. Once we did that, we are able to take advantage of the attach file where we have to simply add the file in our fixtures folder. From there, we need to add our file name. Once we do that, we can go ahead and directly upload our file using the help of attach file command. And if for some reason you're not able to do that, make sure to use the invoke function, which will get rid of any of your CSS or class that's been added for your particular input field. So hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, make sure to leave that in the comments below. And for those of you guys that want to learn more about test automation and how it works with JavaScript using the help of WebDriver.io, make sure to check out my latest course which I have released on WebDriver.io which takes you from the very beginning and teaches you all the concepts related to test automations and best practices along with teaching you JavaScript and CSS to make sure how you can work with various elements such as input type file and other elements that will give you a really good foundational knowledge on test automation. So I will add the link for the course along with the coupon code in the description below. So if you're interested, make sure to go check that out. That's it for this video, guys. I will see you all in the next one.